What's up everybody? Welcome back to the World's Worst Fishing. I'm Chris Jones. Thanks for being here today and taking time out of your busy schedules to watch me play with glitter in my garage. Um, so with that said, uh, today's video, um, I'm sure you've seen the title by now. If you clicked it, duh. Um, stupid me, but we are going to do a really awesome mold unboxing and um, and then we're going to show you a really cool way to use these molds to get some awesome triple laminate effects that I think are going to um, really open up a, a lot of doors for your bait making. So um, before we do that though, I do want to uh, show you some recent work that we've been doing and then I got to give a quick shout out to another bait making brother who has started an awesome podcast that we will be appearing on here shortly. And uh, I just want to make sure that you all get a chance to listen to his program. Um, he's had three or four episodes out now, <clears throat> excuse me, out now already. And um, y'all need to go listen to every one of them. So just to show you some recent work here, we have five leftover plastic pucks. We have black, we have sort of a dark blue, kind of sort of like a tangerine orange, sort of an off-white um, that actually has some orange pigment in it and then basically some dark brown they all have some small silver flake to make this right here so i uh every once in a while i like to take inspiration from the cosmos um or you know phenomena such as the northern lights things like that to get some cool color ideas you know just the way that all the colors blend into each other it, it looks otherworldly celestial even and um i was able to take those colors right there and layer them and blend them into something like that. And what's really cool is I was able to take some of the signature eyes from Jetson here. This is the Cichlid series in this sapphire blue and uh, and the pupils that are just a, a clear see-through hologram really matched that well. Okay, here it is right there, the Made to Cast podcast. And um, awesome, awesome bait maker is hosting it. You can see Brent Hashimoto there. I'm sure I just butchered that last name, but um, excellent excellent bait maker and super great guy to talk to i've been on a couple instagram live streams with him and uh you know he's got several episodes here um you know including one with the uh, fish daddy you know arthur of course um i love this title stuck in the middle with middle river baits you know that's austin hall's outfit and uh we actually uh recorded a podcast uh this past week um that will be coming out i think august 12th so definitely go check him out on instagram and uh, you can listen to him. I listen to him on Spotify here. Made to Cast podcast, super awesome stuff. It's just a chill, open discussion environment between bait makers, and I highly recommend it. All right, everybody. So the laundry Nazi is at it again today. We've got tons of laundry noise, uh, so hopefully it's not going to be a problem. Um, but we're going to go ahead and start. So we have a treasure chest of new molds here. Now, it's all the same mold, so technically once we see one, we've seeing what they are but uh it's a new mold release the mold has already been live for a couple of days but this will be our first time with it and first time really showing it and um you'll immediately know sort of where it came from so let's uh let's open up the box here who doesn't love a sticker i have so many ai stickers now i could literally probably sell them but uh i love them I love them very much. So, here's the mold. Let's check it out. All right. Ooh, looking good, looking good. Yeah, there it is right there. All right, that's a good look. So we'll go ahead and set that one down and get out the next one. And the next one and the next one. Y'all see where I'm going with this? I'm gonna do the unboxing, but not show you what it is. <laughs> Till we get them all laid out. So there's that one. It's gonna be super cool. I promise it'll be worth be worth watching the video. Yeah, there's the next one. Looking good. Nice and shiny. There's my camera. Next. Boy, now that one looks especially good. I think there's only a couple more here. All right. Yep, that one looks good. Looks really good. 
Okay, three more. So we'll go ahead and ditch the box. We'll go ahead and get the next one out. Looks awesome. Two more. There's one right there. And last but not least. All right. There it is. We have unboxed all the new molds. Let's see what they are. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Some of you may have guessed. Some of you have been to the website and probably seen it. Some of you may have even seen it up. There goes the laundry. All right, we're back. So this is the new open pore ribbon tail mold. It is the little brother to the 10 inch. And uh, I, I had some 10 inch worms over here just for a size comparison. That's in one of our copperhead snake patterns. We've really been having fun with the 10 inch mold. And um, speaking of which, there is more a more accurate size comparison. So we can just kind of line up the tips even with each other. So you can kind of see what you're working with there. Now the body depth is the same and the tail depth is the same to ensure pourability. The tail is a little narrower and of course the body is um, shorter. But all in all, it's largely the same worm with the same pouring capabilities. You just get a little bit smaller package. Sometimes big things come in small packages. So we have a few of them here. Um, you know, again, here are some uh, 10 inch worms right there just for a size comparison, all right? Some snakes, sneaky, slippery, slithery snakes. And um, what we're gonna be doing today is showing you how to pour a true triple layer laminate um, in a worm. So like if you're a big fan of like robo worm colors, for example, a mold like this is perfect. And today's video will show you the technical uh, process that you would need to do those robo worm colors. We're not gonna do a robo worm color, but we're going to show you what you would need to do it. And uh, you can even do four layers in this. Uh, Richard Ray, Raw Bates, you know, one of the top talents in the world at hand pouring. Um, he was able to squeeze in a four layer in the 10 inch, which means you could go four in this one as well if you chose to do so. So in any event, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna go grab some colors off the shelf and figure out what we're doing. All right, so like a week or two ago, I did this sort of mint chocolate chip triple laminate, sort of a dark brown emerald green vein and then a, a highlight blue belly i really like that so i think we're going to do that i think it's something that we can do comfortably and uh and show you on camera we're going to be using of course uh the fishing all out hot plate and uh let's go get the pigments all right pigment shelf here we need regular i think i used regular brown yeah it's down there somewhere regular brown so that's scupper nog all right so regular brown we're going to need black we're going to need emerald Okay, and then we're gonna need some blue highlight. This is, now, see all my labels are like gone, the oils corrode the ink. So yeah, that's essentially the recipe right there. Let me zoom out. Brown, black, emerald, blue highlight. And um, you know, you can use flakes doing this kind of thing. Sometimes they'll sink to the bottom because we're using heat. Um, so that's something that you really, really have to be mindful of, but that uh, Color-wise, it's pretty simple. That's what we're gonna go with. So, just like most hand pouring in aluminum, the key to doing this cleanly, again, you know, it's still a worm mold, even though it's dead. Uh, you know, even though the body is deep and and uh, you know, Josh made it as pourable as possible. Um, you know, these are still small, small molds that we're trying to fit a lot of color in very precisely. And uh, the key is temperature. So what we've done is we've set the hot plate for about 260, 262.4, that's just kind of how the numbers came out. But about 260 gives me what I want, right? Because in order to pour a really even laminate where the color flows evenly, you need heat. You need heat because it's gonna level out that plastic. And really, you're allowing gravity to do the work and the hot temperature of the mold will essentially help it to pour itself. Pouring the tails will be, a, I don't wanna say a breeze, but they will fill themselves in cleanly once they're to temperature. And of course you get that bond, you get the thermal blend. This is the way to do it in my opinion. Um, so, you know, if you're running a, uh, a, a, a more inexpensive pancake griddle at home, really try to toggle your temperature down um, Get your mold just hot enough to where it will just start to boil a little bit of moisture off, but no hotter than that. 
Um, you know, the whole idea is to get an even flow of plastic that will allow gravity to settle it so that you have even lines. All right, so we actually have to make the top color first because you pour the mold sort of upside down inverted. So a couple drops of brown here. All right. <clears throat> we'll see where that gets us. And we have chosen dead on plastic swim bait blend today, the black bucket swim bait blend. You know, to pour the 10 inch or a little bit bigger worm, you can go up to crawl tube comfortably. Um, but for a smaller worm like this, I think swim bait blend is perfect. It's a perfect medium durometer. And uh, I think that's what we're gonna do. Maybe three drops of black or so. All right, we'll see where that gets us. You know, I'm often asked why I don't show, or why I don't teach like actual recipes, right? Like the exact amount of plastic, the exact number of drops of color, the exact amount of powder. And to be honest, I don't use recipes anymore. I actually rather teach color building, you know, teach you how to think in terms of color. And uh, to, to me, that's just more valuable than just giving you a blunt recipe book. I, wanna, I want to show the journey, the, uh, the process and the mindset behind color building um, rather than just giving away 400 videos of color recipes. Okay, so I think that right there is good. Just a nice dark chocolate brown, and uh, we're gonna go with that. All right, so we are all ready here to start, and um, we're essentially just going to pour along the cavity and do our best to basically move with the cavity. And uh, I'll show you what I mean by that. All right, so we're gonna start the pour. We're gonna move up, all the way up to the, that little notch there then back down, okay? Just like that. And how deep you pour it, how shallow you pour it, is really up to you. You know, here we're, we're doing a triple laminate so that bottom cavity can't be too thick. Or sorry, so, so basically the, the top color, which is the first color that goes in the mold, can't be too, uh, <clears throat> too tall, right? Or else we're not gonna fit all of the all of the colors in there the way that we want essentially just like that gravity essentially does the rest Okay, so all of the brown tops are in, and that's about how deep into the cavity the brown is, right? So again, we're pouring these upside down. That's the top color, right? We now have room for a thin layer of the green, and then we'll have room to top them off with the um, blue highlight. All right, more down on plastic swim bait blend. Looking good there, nice and clear. And um, this is just straight emerald green i love this color i love it one two three four let's stop at five see where that gets us this is about half a cup of plastic so we'll just kind of see where five gets us you really can't go wrong golly i love this color it is magic in a cup okay same song and dance with the green except we have to pour a lot less of it and pour it thinner. So I'll show you what I mean. We're just gonna get it started and then immediately go down the worm to about there. That's where I like to stop it. Now as you can see, the heat itself sort of just blends it in naturally. It thermally fills itself in where it needs to go, okay? So we're gonna try it again here. Pour it as thin as possible. All right, that way we still have room for the bottom layer, which will be the last one in, which is the blue highlight. So if we look closely, we do have space, right? Between that green 
and the top of that mold. It's not a lot of space. However, that is space enough to pour because the molds are hot. The plastic will basically fill itself in nice and even and we're not going to get a lot of overspill. All right, there it is. Everything is looking nice and, um, you know, even flows, uh, good thermal uh, blending there. <clears throat> you know, you can see the green just kind of fades away into that brown and that's really the mold filling itself in. You know, you've always heard the phrase work smarter, not harder. And that is, you know, temperature, proper temperature control and understanding allows you to do that. You know, that's how we get clean laminate lines and swim baits. And it's really no different here with the worms. You're just having to pour a lot more carefully, uh, you know, because, you know, little thin layers in a thin worm mold, very narrow cavities, you know, it's tough. It, you know, what's really funny is when you go from that to pouring back into your swim baits, it, it feels like you're pouring into the Grand Canyon and you're like, oh man, this is easy. You know, so doing stuff like this, um, not only is very rewarding in the worms that you get, but it's also excellent for building your hand pouring chops. All right, just some blue highlight powder there. So let's just kind of stir that in and why are we out of focus here? We'll stir that in and see where that gets us. My guess is that it's gonna look like blue highlight powder. Yeah, look at that, gorgeous. And that's basically gonna serve as the belly color for the body portion of the worm, as well as the tail color. Now, of course, you could split things up. You could pour a separate tail color and uh, you know blend it into a different body color. But uh, this looks really nice, and again, just keeping with the triple laminate theme, you know, we're, we're running out of colors here. This has to be the last color, so. Triple, triple laminate layer there. Lots of saturation. That was, um, that was a pretty good amount of blue highlight. We'll go a little bit more. We'll do another smidge or so. And uh, I think we can call it a day after that. But you know, now comes the fun part, just topping them off and then we get to fill in the tail, which pouring the tails is always fun. So, you know, we'll try to get as much of that on camera as we can. Um, sometimes doing these really intricate pours, it's really tough to do them on camera, I will not lie. Uh, you know, the camera is usually in the way of where I need to be to get the correct angle and, and just feel like I'm getting, you know, let down, down with the molds, level with the molds where I really want to see things. Uh, so we'll do the best that we can. All right, got the camera angle kind of way off to the side. Let's see what we can do here. See how that tail just fills itself in. That is the magic of temperature. Yeah, how about that? Is that not sexy? Here we go. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. Just like that. Just let temperature do the work for you. Yeah, completely different than like doing the snakes where we're actually cold pouring the bait and then heating it up after, which is the only way to do that. But if you want to get these smooth, even laminates that are not only going to bond, but also blend pretty for you with straight, even lines all the way down the full length of the body of the worm, gotta get your temperatures up. 260 is the magic number for me. You know, a flat mold like this that lays flat is going to heat up a lot faster and require less temperature to get as hot as, say, a swim bait that stands up, right? That stands vertically. So, different temperatures for different molds for different applications. You know, I've always said that hand pouring should be really referred to as game of temperatures. And that's really what it is. It's all a balance of temperature and steady hands color is almost secondary because without without proper temperature even if your color is good your bait's gonna kind of suck all right so we've got the worm molds cooled down and set up since there's really no room for a drum roll on the actual uh, worm molds without pretty much drumming on the worm we'll do it here so drum roll please
All right, now what we're gonna do is we're going to change up camera angle. What we're gonna do with that uh, punch crawl mold right there, pretty sure this is a punch crawl. Yeah, freaking awesome. What we're gonna do with that is sort of use it as a table top, I guess, to then, um, oops, lay the worms out. So here we go, let me uh, kind of trim up a little bit. There's really, as you can see, you can pour things really clean when the mold is hot because it, it fills itself in. You don't get that dome over the top and, uh, and then you don't get that, that bleed over. So, oh, there it is. Triple laminate, baby. Yeah. How about that? It's that simple. Get the mold hot and it dang near pours it itself. You just have to have a steady hand and really your timing is gonna be key to not filling the, the, the top color too much or you know not leaving enough room to fit all three colors in. Right? But there's there's the side profile. Yeah. Isn't that something? Mint chocolate chip is what it reminds me of, sort of like a mint chocolate chip ice cream. So again, there they are. There they are for a size reference too, not only the color, but the actual worm and mold itself. If I can get that to, to lay out there. There's the size of the worm. Right, so I believe it's five and a half inches in the mold from tip of the nose to the bend in the tail. And it will hang, if I can get it to hang, about seven and a half inches. So that's approximately seven and a half inches. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's get a few more out and uh, see if they all came out that good. Let's go ahead and pull these from this mold. Oh yeah. Isn't that something? Three layers. And you can even go four. Maybe somebody will, will even uh, push the envelope and, and get a five, you know? Anything's probably possible. You know, if you, if you get the molds hot enough, the plastic will pour thin enough for you to be able to, to fill in multiple, multiple layers. You know, that's how you get these threes and, and fours. So, you know, because I mean, as you can see, that, that green line is thinner than if I just straight up poured plastic onto the table and let it settle itself out. It would not, it would not settle out as thin as that. That is a temperature phenomena right there. I, I hate to even use that word. It makes me sound like I'm talking about UFOs, but that is truly possible because we poured it fast and the temperature filled it into those sides. That is actually a thinner layer of plastic than you can actually pour plastic out and get. And um, you know, there again, I just keep going back to temperature, but that's really what it's all about. So yeah, these are looking really good, really consistent. Really great laminates there. Yes, sir. How about that? We're going to get them out, arrange them, and um, that might be might be all she wrote for this one. Awesome new mold again. Um, super, super affordable. $30, right? The 10-inch version was $33. So either one is not going to break the bank. And as you can see, even though it's a small mold, you can do anything that comes to mind. Well, so we are uh, firing back up the hot plate and uh, we're going to go ahead and use the rest of this plastic to make some more. Uh, so that's what we're going to do to sort of sign this video off. Again, they're the ones that we just made today, looking super awesome. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to sign off there. We're going to do these off camera and uh, we're just going to keep going until we're out of plastic. All right, everybody. Um, hope you all enjoyed today's video. I'll put a link down in the description to the mold, of course. And uh, I'm starting to see a lot of the 10 inchers pop pop up throughout the bait community, the AI 10 inch mold. I'm seeing some really great stuff. I actually just saw um, somebody do a snake today. Um, uh, Richard with Raw, bait, Raw Baits did a snake, awesome snake, uh, beautiful orange uh, orange hues and colors. And um, now we're gonna we're gonna start seeing some seven and a half. So I've already seen a few. So uh, I'm gonna be on the lookout for those triple laminates out there. 
um, and hopefully everyone will have a lot of fun with that. I can't wait to see what everyone can come up with. Can't wait to see what I can try to come up with. You know, this is just one out of a million, uh, this sort of mint green. So, um, hope you all uh, found the uh, video fun and uh, maybe you learned something if you've never poured this way. And um, again, you know, the mold is only $30 and, you know, you can be doing this stuff in your own garage right away. So, um, with that said, we're out of here. We're going to make some more worms and go inside and get cool because it is hot. We'll see you all in the next video. All right, we're back real quick. We were actually able to squeak out a whole nother set, have just a little bit of plastic left. And uh, yeah, so we'll have double that and uh, looking good. All right, we're really gonna go this time.